Well, welcome. Just thought I'd go live today and cover some reporting and maybe some other tools. Um, Beatles had a great uh, Ned McGreevy broadcast last night um, where the question came up where some of the league members were wanting to look through the reports. And it was interesting because action's really deep when it comes to reports. And sometimes, again, with all with this game, you get busy playing or doing one thing in it, and you don't really dig around and see what's under the hood for all the great stuff that's there. So I'm going to spend some time today um, doing that. So I'll just give it a few minutes here, see if people join. I think Beatles, uh, he had an APBA broadcast that he cut short when he heard I was going to go live. So we'll give him uh, a minute or two. He may join. Um, I ran a test so that we could look at some of the data from that. And what I did is took uh, my 70s file and just ran it up until the all-star break so that we have some replay stats to look at. And you can see that um, we are partial way through the season. we go to the scheduled league games, we'll kind of show where we stop this league right here on I see Beatles is here. Good to see you. Just giving it a second here, waiting for you to come in and I've got a test league that um, I set up and got to a certain point to kind of help us dig into these reports and highlight those. So it looks like it's just you and me. And uh, thanks, I, I uh, hopped on to see who was live and saw Beatles was doing his APBA uh, broadcast blast with Ernie Harwell game. And I thought, oh, great, I'll listen to this. And then he cut it short. Um, so we could uh, hop on over here. So what I've done, Beatles, is um, I took my 70s file and I set up a test league, uh, my franchise 70s. I ran it up to the all-star break. So you'll see here when we go to the play game schedules here and click on the uh, different games, we can go back and look at the boxes. But with the schedule I'm using from the 70s, the last games before the All-Star break were the 21st, and then you'll see here we don't have any games scheduled for the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So it makes the 23rd a perfect time to have an All-Star game. So I thought, while I'm looking at reporting, maybe we'll talk about the All-Star feature as well. So I ran the league up until the last games on the 21st, and that's where it stands now. So you can see here on the league screen, you can get some reporting here, and it's a great snapshot which is I, I have selected here for snapshot. Um, we can also go over here and just pick leaders, right? Let's look at the leaders. I can choose NL. I could choose both leagues, right? Let's take a look at the leaders. What do we got going on here in this league? And I think some may, not all, but some may look at this and think, oh, here's my reporting. And that could be the farthest thing from the truth because there's so much more areas in this game that you can go and get the reporting. So. We're going to dig into it a little bit, but right here at your league screen here, you know, you can look at down here, recent games. We can talk about headlines right here. So we switched to headlines and now we're going to see all the games um, that were played on a certain date. And you're just getting a little headline. Like if you're reading through the paper, right? you know, hey, Milwaukee pounds, California. So you can look at it this way. Okay. We can also scroll all the way back to the beginning of your league that you ran. I'm like, yeah, the Cubs, the Bears says, yeah, it wasn't. I, I was like, cool, I'll work on some of my files and, and go live later. And I'm going to listen. So I told Beatles, hey, I love listening to this. And then he just kind of cut it short. I was looking forward to uh, crunching numbers on some of my, uh, uh, who am I working? I'm working on the 1916 uh, to 20 Giants right now. I said, I'll spend some time before I go live. But anyway. He cut it short and I felt obliged to hurry and get over here. So uh, that's what happened with that rain delay. Um, but here on this front screen, you've got a lot of reporting options, right? So we've gone down here in the replay standings, looking at headlines and you can scroll back all the way um, and, and look at 
the headlines. You can also come up here and say upcoming. So we can see the upcoming games that will, the next game start on the 25th, right? So there are a lot of things you can do just on this opening screen. So we'll put it on recent games, shows you the result uh, of some of that. Over here, we can select leaders, right? We could also look at team batting. So right here, if I wanted to see how the team stats are going for this league, let's look at, um, just stick to the NL. And there, and we're going to get the NL batting, right? So up here, we're always going to see what our standings are here on July 21st. You can see the Phillies are doing really well. Baltimore's in the lead, Oakland, um, and Cincinnati, right? All great teams during the 70s. But take a look at this, team batting. So great snapshot here. Um, you're seeing, based on the schedule where we're at, you'll notice that we're using a real... Um, Major League schedule. I think it might be using 1971 for this league, either 71 or 74 that I built out. So it's 162 games. I basically took those real schedules from those years and used them as a template for the game. So you'll see that we get to the All-Star um, selection and we've got Houston's played a little bit uh, more than the others, but that this is what really happens during All-Star breaks, right? So you can get a nice snapshot of here of what's going on in your league. Um, Team batting, what else we got? How about this? Let's talk about high team. What's high team? Oh, look at this. We can get a nice snapshot here of runs for one team. So we've got Chicago leading the way on July 9th against Atlanta. They put up 19 runs. So this kind of gives you some more reporting here. It's very convenient at your starting page, right? That What I like about this is you're not having to go dig and figure out where this report's at. We're going to get into some of those that are maybe a little bit more hidden under the hood, but this is a lot of power right here to get quick glances at what's going on in your league. Okay, how do you, long games. So we've got several 12, 13 inning games, but we have a 25 inning game right here. Now, if I click on that, guess what it does? It pulls up the box. Look at this line up here. Look at this, oh my gosh, it was a one to nothing, uh, uh, or no, five to four got that uh, winning run in the 25th inning. Look at the pitcher usage on this. This is great. Um, one of the other things that um, I had brought up, some people may not know, is when you're looking at a box score and you see this, STF. STF stands for stuff. And um, you'll see a plus, a double plus, and sometimes a minus. So let's take a look. Um, I just sent, uh, Arnold had hit me up, uh, Arnold Hunter, with uh, a question about game score and stuff when he was looking at some of these um, box scores. So I'm going to pull this up and drag it right over here for us. And let's see if we can, uh, I'm always shouting, but you see here, here's the stuff rating, right? So the pitchers are given the stuff rating in the game and it's hidden and you don't see this till the end. And the game manual here is saying it applies about 20% of their appearances to add some fluctuation in here, right? And if you're a minus minus, it's going to um, increase the chance of a hit against you by 15% just for that game. And we don't know that this is going on. Um, but it's really cool that it's baked in so that even though you may know what the pitcher did in real life as a manager, you need to really watch them and see if it feels like they've got some good stuff going and you leave them in a little longer or they look like they're getting hit early. So this is built into the game engine, the stuff rating. And when the game's over, you'll get to see if there were any ratings applied to the pitchers during that. Right. So I guess there's a, you know, a plus and a minus and a double plus double minus. So uh, take a look at the uh, manual, um, which is a PDF that's located in there and, and explains some great stuff. But if you see that game score is the Bill James, you know, they start with 50 and try to go up or down from their 50 being kind of an average start or whatever. And you can, that's a Sabre metric term there that Bill James did. And, th and that's just another way to evaluate pitchers. You can go look that up on fan graphs or um, at SABR and learn more about that. But interesting stuff there. So we got to see that box score, but this is really cool because you're looking, oh man, this is interesting. So now when you're in here, you're like, wow, we got a, 
Philadelphia got 20 hits, and I, I can just click on that and fire up that that box score. And let's go in here and take a look at this. Let's look at the batting. And you can see here, yeah, 20 hits from Philadelphia. Poor uh, Johnson only went 0 for 5, right? Everybody else got at least two hits that game. So anyway, this is really a cool, um, uh, cool factor. Um, Beatles is saying that you can see stuff on their player card. And let me pull up a player card and let's talk about that. So let's go to a pitching staff. And it's a little bit different um, on this, a little bit different context, I should say. But they do have ratings here that'll show you, like you can see here, Fritz Peterson on this Yankee team, he's rated as a starter. And that's probably because if you look over here, he started 36 of 38 games he was in, right? And as a reliever, you'll kind of get to see the ratings they had. As a closer, he would be a minus, a plus. This is kind of a uses the plus minus, but maybe a little bit different context than what would be applied during that game. This gives you an idea of kind of um, how their rating is for that role. Um, but all good stuff and very deep and more. Here's more reporting, right? We always can't, well, probably shouldn't forget that we can always pull up a player card and get really specific about what's being tracked here. Um, this is new right here, the three game winning streak that it's showing. And this is new, ERA 8. So he's 8th in the league in ERA. These are new features that were put in this year that look at the league file that you're in and figure out where that player ranks. So these are kind of new things that pop up. But you look down here, it's great breakdown here just for Peterson. You can see it shows the games and innings pitched in their ERA down here per the month. You can look at his ERA plus real and see how he's doing in the replay, if he's better or worse. You can look at his real stats and replay stats here, which is a great way to track. Um, and then now they have this high, right? So you've got a player high. So you can start looking here at um, his high pitch count for the year, the most innings he pitched. This is just really, um, really, really a cool snapshot to be able to see right on the player card, right? And there's other places we can get it. Look here, we're tracking pitches. So you can see pitches he's thrown strike percentage, pitches per game, pitches per inning pitch. I mean, this game tracks about every stat that I think is tracked. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, we've got some people joining here today. I've got uh, Texagander5. Great to have you to the action community. We're um, all of us that I know Beatles is a big fan of the game. I'm a huge fan of the game. I'm really even more a huge fan of the game with the 2023 version that came out with a lot of the analysis tools and, 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 and just the overall gameplay. And what I decided to do today was just dig into the reports because I watched Beatles is running his uh, Ned McGreevy dead ball tribute league. And some of the uh, people in the league don't have the game. So what he does is he runs the game on his computer. And sometimes, you know, he'll live stream and he'll have people uh, join the live stream and then kind of help manage throughout the game, right? Like pinch hit and do different things. And some of them don't have the access to go in here and dig around for reports. So a lot of them were looking to see, um, hey, what reports are there available? And it's just so extensive. In fact, the reporting may be one of the most extensive things about this game. But I love this. Like if I'm doing a replay, whether it's a season replay and you want to see how you're, how the players are faring, how they did in real life, this file I'm using is, you know, based on my five-year, or, or I'm sorry, I'm confused, my 1970s decade where I took a player and averaged their best straight three years and created and homebrewed this, right? Um, but you can see that the line for Fritz Peterson for those three years average here is the real right at the top, right? So what's cool is you can kind of track how he's doing. You can also go over here to usage, right? And if you were doing a league where you had strict rules on not wanting like a 50 inning pitcher to pitch a hundred innings or whatever, look at this. This, this lets you um, kind of see on pace, right? What, what their pace percentage is, what they're on pace for. Um, just another great view here at the player tab. We can see you've got his pitching. He's not batting because I'm using a DH uh, league, right? But when we go to pitching, you can see all those great pitching stats right here. You can um, see all the games. And once again, I just did this. I'm like, wow, he had 145 
pitches on this game. And I just go over here and I click on it. And guess what? It goes right to that game's box score. That's the other user friendly thing here. And Arnold, great to see you here. If you haven't checked your messages on the action forum, please do. I, I sent you a pretty detailed answer for the questions you had on game score and pitcher stuff in the game. And I uh, just covered them here a little bit. Random human here. Hello. So this is really cool. You can just get to that box score and you can say, man, this is interesting. I had Fritz Pit, uh, Peterson go and let's take a look. Yep, he went 140 um, uh, on the pitch count. And you can take a look at that game. We can go over here and click recap, and we want to see a recap of what took place in that game. So if you're in a league that that does write-ups, because I know some leagues, they'll have um, people kind of care for the write-ups of the week and stuff. This recap is really great if you're doing a write-up to publish on your league file or on a web page or anything like that. But just a cool thing, right? So to me, if you haven't dug into it, really, when you're doing a replay, go to the pitcher. Um, or to the uh, individual pitcher and batter cards and take a look at how they're doing. So let's take a look at, um, how about Reggie Jackson on these Yankees in the late seventies, right? And the pictures may be a little off cause I've got my uh, other file I'm working on that I just kind of have all the pictures thrown in. So I don't have them assigned specifically, but we can see how Reggie's doing down here. His OPS plus real is 144 and he's 151. So he's even doing better in this replay. He's already got 27 home runs through 82 games and he had 32 in real life. So he's tearing it up. So good way to look at it. So we're just at the front screen here. And again, for those of you joining us and Al Red Sox fans here, way to go, Al. Glad, glad to see you. I'm just covering... Um, some reports. And what I did is I took this file, I ran it up to the 21st of July, and then we stopped. It's all-star break time. And we're just going around at some of the reporting that's available to you conveniently at the opening screen. So we looked at high team just for the NL. Um, you could actually go and just pull up a team from here. Like if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm con I, this is my league, but I'm controlling Detroit, right? Let's take a look at this. I can just look at Detroit and look what it's doing. It's calling out the leaders in those categories from my team. So I can get access to really cool things right here from the original screen. Over here again, I can look, I'm looking at recent games, but I can, you know, this is the other thing that I just realized. I never go in here and change this. And this gives me headlines, just some quick headlines of what happened. But I really like this. So if I've got, I'm looking at my Tigers right here. And I'm thinking, man, Lance Parrish is tearing it up. He's leading the league here, right? But what's interesting is if you look, he's only got 53 at-bats. And that's because he's sharing time with Bill Freehan, who's got 284 of those at-bats, right? So uh, that would make sense is why his uh, at-bats are a little bit low there. Um, home runs, got Steve Kemp with 16. So this would be my decade, uh, franchise decade Tiger team right here. Um, enjoying that, but a lot of cool um, things you can do right here. Um, let's look at team pitching, both leagues. Both leagues going, who's got the best ERA? So right here we can see Baltimore. I don't think that would surprise anybody in the uh, 70s with that pitching staff, right? And if I easily, if you look what I did right here, if I want to go look at Baltimore, I just hover right over their name right here on the team pitching and I just click on it and it's that, it's that easy. And here I am at their screen. So navigating in this game with just being able to click on different uh, things and go places is wonderful. So yeah, Baltimore leading the way in ERA. Houston giving up the least amount of home runs probably makes sense inside the uh, Astrodome there. Uh, strikeouts with California, no doubt Ryan and Tanana are uh, a big uh, part of why they're leading the way in strikeouts. We can look at team fielding. Who's it? Cleveland. Wow. I'm not sure I would have guessed that. And I created these files and did the ratings. I'm not sure I would have ever guessed Cleveland in the 70s would be leading the way in fielding percentage. Wow. Um, but they are. And really cool. So you've got outfield assists here. Um, great plays. So if you're playing this game and you've got it turned on when you watch it, uh, Beatles and I did a head to head game yesterday and you could see like, uh, you'll see poor play, great play, 
Um, and you'll see sometimes it'll be one flashing called web gem, which is a great play on steroids, right? But this will track a lot of the great plays and individual players will have that as well. So if we click on Cleveland here, we can go to their roster and take a look at, oh, well, they got Greg Nettles, who uh, uh, was a third baseman. So let's take a look at his card. And you can see if we go to fielding, we can go and we can start seeing um, what he's doing in the replay, right? So right here, there's his real uh, stats right there at third base. Here in the replay is what he's doing, and it's tracked that he's made 21 great plays and six poor ones at third base, and run save. This is the other thing that's so cool now is it's saving um, information here on their run saved fielding, which is great. And home runs robbed. So let's see if we can find an outfielder. See George Hendrick. Go to fielding. Well, not he's just a little bit below average here, right? But what's what's cool is I don't think I've ever really looked at this here to see it tracking home runs robbed. And you know, uh, the bear, the Cubs, the Bears. You're exactly right. Um, you're exactly right on that. Getting to a ball is one thing. What you do once you get to that ball is a complete different thing as far as range and uh, error rating. Very true. And that's exactly how action works. So this is just another cool thing. This is also helping me um, doing these videos because it's making me go in and click on places I've never clicked to see reports. So this is pretty cool. I'm enjoying this right here. Um, let's take a look at home runs, both leagues. Home run data. So we've got, we got Reggie Jackson, two iterations of him leading the way in home runs. So the 1970s Oakland slice for the A's and the New York are both tied with 27. Nice. Aaron with Atlanta. Home runs per team. You can see New York is uh, leading the way there. And then you've got the park. Look, it's tracking the park. And what park is giving up the most home runs? Right now it's County Stadium. Grand Slams. Pitchers. Look at this. Perry has given up. Let me click on Perry's card. Jim Perry has given up 33 home runs. And he only gave up 26 in real life. So this is some bizarre stuff going on. But you got to remember, this is not a an actual season I'm replaying. You've got players coming in from all over throughout the 70s with different slices um, that they're based on. Parks have changed. A lot of different factors going on here. So interesting right here. All right. So, um, yeah. Team statistics. Break it down so you can just see batting runs per game and kind of see who's doing what. Yeah, it's like Beals. We haven't got into the deep reporting. This is all the stuff that's just available right here at your front page. And this is stuff over the years that Action's put in here that's just great. You don't have to go up here and start digging around for, oh, let me go in here and figure out, you know, how I'm going to look at different league stats. This is just a quick, convenient way for you to see it here. Now let's take a look at, let me see, I got a little notes here so I don't forget what I want to cover here. Let's go take a look at team reports. If you look at team reports, it brings up this page, right? So now it it is you can scroll right down here and change the team you want to look at. Let's go pick a team. Let's pick this Cleveland or Cleveland team. They don't get any love, right, in the 70s. And you can say right here, what do you want to look at? So if we want to look at the real ones that the, that their cards were built off, we can toggle right here. And then take a look at this is what their cards are all based off of. Then we can go up here and change it to replay. And see how they're doing. We can come over here and see who's got the most at bats. I can click on any of these headers here to reorganize that. We can see who their leader is in home runs. We got Craig Nettles, right? How about OPS? Um, at bats. And this is a great snapshot just to go in your team and start looking at it. You can also go over here and select all of these categories, as many as you want, and then view them or export them. Another great thing, if you were going to you know, export this and use it on a website, if you were going to send it out to people in the league, um, 
whatever you would want to do with it, you've got all those options right here. Um, one of the cool ones is batting real versus real play. So let's take a look at that. And what that produces right here is it looks, it breaks down each player and it'll show you what they did in real life and what they did in the computer replay. And where this is really cool is if people are doing an out of the box, say you're taking 1975 and you wanted to, you know, use as played lineups or whatever, right? Or you wanted to use your own lineups to see if you could do better for a team, right? Then you could come to this report and run it and take a look at how each person fared based on what you'd have expected them to do. So this is really a cool view right here. Up here, you always have the option, right? If you want to change what this report looks like as far as font size or whatever, you could even email league members because if you have, I believe, um, if you set up a league and assign in the team information, um, you can put in, I think, emails in there and names of all your people, and this will help. Um, you could just send an email to them right away with that. Um, you could export this in HTML or disk. And if I hit this on disk, then it will save a copy of this within that season league folder. So my season down here, you can see, I didn't spell right. It's called 1970s file test. I left the T off, right? I would just go under that season and look for that and it would be there. But same thing, we could also do this. We could say, I want to take a look at this. I want to look at my, let's say you're getting ready to start a season. You want to look at your real stats. I want to look at my roster, batting, pitching, fielding, right? And here it is. So you'll notice I got my nice cool little headers up here. And this, this is a printout to show me um, another view of, uh, hey, Smelly Wrestling Greek is here. Glad to see you. Just going over some reporting. You can see here, this is all the real stats. But you can see it's showing the age how they bat. This is just a great view to see all this, right? How they're at bats and home runs. And if they're a pitcher, games and starting pitchers. And if we scroll down over here, you can see I've asked for all those reports. So I'm going to get that snapshot. Then I'm going to get the, the batting, right? Then I'm going to get the pitching. And then I'm going to get the fielding. And the fielding will break down by position. So you'll see all the players and their data that are rated at those positions, right? And these are the real stats. So if we go back in, now that we've played, we can switch this over to replay. Whoops, replay. And let's say I want to say the same thing. I already know who's uh, on my roster, right? But let's take a look at batting, pitching, and fielding replay, and then just hit view print. And here we go. I've got another view here. And this is another way just to uh, look at, I know I think uh, somebody on your channel yesterday, Beatles said, I think it was Ken Castro said that they would just spend 24 seven looking at the reports and the stats. Um, right. So here you go. We can kind of see what everybody's doing. If we go down to fielding, it gives us another view. So you can see all the data here for the people. You can see we've got four people that have played games at um, catcher for the Indians. Here's what they're doing. Let's take a look at the outfielders here. And here's the category. I'm, I'm looking for one of these. It's called rob. It means we had a, a fielder, an outfielder, rob somebody of a home run. I want to see that. Because this is the first time I've ever noticed that's been in, in there. So. so there's that. So this is team reports. A lot of stuff you can do there. And then you can just come over here after you've looked at one team. Maybe you want to export it and save a file. And then you want to go down here and, you know, look at another team. You can go down there. Pretty easy, right? And you can look at standard, right? Or we can go lefty-righty. So if we're going to do lefty-righty, now this is going to break down your splits here for how they're doing versus lefties and righties. So if you haven't been in here, you own this game get in here and do it. You could also go here and select all teams and print out one of those big reports with for everybody. That'd be a huge report, but you've got the option here. So team reports, powerful tool right here. Hot button at the top for you. Feel free to use it. Um, also at this team thing, 
you can go up here and click on because you can scroll through all the games, right? You can go back to a game and just, again, like anything in this game, click on this game here at San Diego and it takes you right to that box score. Hey, I want to see what happened here. Here's the recap. Here's the score sheet, whatever. Very convenient. What else do we have to look at here? Okay, so we've talked about team reports. And then how about just reports? So if we go up to reports, you got different options, right? This is where we can do, and I'll, I'll highlight it for those of you that haven't seen it, but Action 2023 just came out with this. This is where you can do this analysis report. So let's say, you know, I'm uh, Baltimore and I'm getting ready to uh, go into the home team being New York, right? Uh, and I'm going to be facing, let's say I'm facing Gidry. This is where I could say, hey, I've got a game with Gidry coming up at Yankee Stadium. This is where I can toggle over here. I can display the hit percentages or I can go over here and change it to averages. I like this view. And I can see that although Baylor is a 279 hitter, facing Gidry, he's expected to be a 23% chance to get hit. So this is where you could go and figure out who's my best batters to put in against. Yeah, this is the ultimate rabbit right against Gidry, right? And at the same time, you get to see what they're rated at one through 10 for their fielding position. So it's nice to know this if you're trying to get a better bat, but you're going to have maybe a fielder that's maybe a two or a three and you don't want it. This is a great screen to be able to make these judgments. So another report that's available is this matchup analysis tool. Use it. Feel free to get lost in here. This is just basically it's its own rabbit hole, as Beetle says. Next thing under reports is um, you've got a quick league report. So if we hit quick league report, let's say we want both combined and you just want to do box scores. You could pick box scores and just go from a certain date and time, a week. And then what do you want to put in here? You want to put, you know, team rankings, league leaders, or just standings, right? You could, this is where you could go back and say, hey, what were the standings, you know, between this time period? You could just choose standings, right? and say, I want to just look at from April, figure out when the season is first, right, to April 30th or whatever, right, or whatever date you might have in mind. Um, let's build it. There you go. So this lets you build quick league reports. Shows here road division versus one run games, extra inning games, another cool thing. So a lot of power right here, just being able to do that. Oh, and look at this. How about I save this? There we go. Oh, I've got it backwards, don't I? What a door. Beatles is yelling at the screen, Steve, you clicked the wrong box. Let's see. Let's go 4-3 to 521. Build report. Now it'll just give us a snapshot between those dates. Well, it should. But it seems like it's giving the overall. Maybe for some reason that's not sticking. I don't know. I could also pull box scores if I wanted to see those. Another thing with reports, let's go to players. Um, there's tons of stuff to do here. Like we can go look at game logs. We can look at leaders by date, replay versus real. Um, we can look at fielding, batting. So let's go to players batting. Let's pull that one up. It's going to bring up a player report. And basically looking at the entire database here. So you can see I've got stats on real. So if you came in here, you could see this is based on the cards, how they're built. The highest average is Rod Carew. Most home runs is Hank Aaron. I could go down here to stats and change that to replay. Let this reset. 
um, let's say I look at average and I've got some of these one and two batters, I can come down here and say, look, I just want to look at batting minimums of, now let's just go with two plate appearances a game. And that should screen that average down a little bit for you, right? So now you can see in the league so far, we got Joe Morgan leading the way. So it lets you kind of scroll out what you want to look for in here. And this is important if you're like you're searching, uh, whether it's real or replay. If you want to look for a player and you're like, man, eh, where's so-and-so? Let's look for um, Dave Concepcion. And you'll notice it starts finding the person just as soon as I C-O-N-C, boom, there's Dave Concepcion finds him. Hey, how's uh, Willie Stargell doing in the league? I, I go to type Stargell. Here comes Stargell. I click on his name, and it pulls his card up. So it, going into this player database and being able to look at reports, is uh, this is great, too. Um, the stats, what do they mean? Hey, click on view stat key. That's another nice little tip that's in here. What do all these things mean, right? RP would be a replay stat. So this is nice and convenient right here. If at any of these reports, you ever wanted it to be on your opening screen when you first fire the game up, you could choose to do that. Like if you wanted this to be the expanded batting screen or whatever, um, you could do that. We can change all of these reports that are here. They have many that are built in, right? And there's a lot of room for others. So let's talk about this. Who do we want to look at? We want to look at all teams, all players. Um, no qualifiers. And let's say we want to look at fielding range. So now this will, t and although it doesn't really matter real or replay because the, the range stays, stays the same. Let's take a look at this. This is a great way to go into the player database when you've got like a league file, if you wanted to sort and see it. So you can see this league file, these are the ratings uh, in the 70s file right here for the position players. First baseman, second baseman, right? third base, short stops, left field, center field, right field, right? So you have all of these pre-built reports that you can look at. Got a batting plus now, right? Which is giving you your average and, and OB and OPS plus. Go into replay. So you, again, you can just get lost in here in the player reporting, right? Pitcher run support. So let's just view pitchers, replay. Look at this. Let's maybe screen this out to own at least 50 innings pitched. And let's, who's getting the most runs per game? Well, Ed Halicki is getting some bats behind him. Look, 15 games, and he's get averaging 7.5 runs per game. Who's getting the least help? Well, Mike Torres, Jim Hunt, look at Jim Hunter, not getting much help when he's on the mound, right? And he's still 14 and seven. So just another rabbit hole, as we would say, right? When you can go in here and look at either real or um, replay stats, whatever your choice is as you're digging through this, right? Some may not apply, right? Um, inherited runners, replay versus real pitching. Let's take a look at what we got here. Ah, so 22 wins in real life for Hunter. In the replay, they've got 14, right? So you'll notice there's a replay comparison under all these stats for people. It's another great tool. Thanks for stopping by, Texagander5. And Beetle says you can customize report. He is correct. You can customize reports. You can also, if you want to, See all the reports we have in here. I think we had, um, remember the old McMillan? 
this is in the Macmillan format on how they had um, data. If you ever had the Macmillan encyclopedia, NEFT, right? If you wanted to see that format, then what they would show. And some of these reports have been in here for years, right? Let's take a look at the relief pitching report. We've got opportunities. How about blown saves? Wayne Granger's blown seven out of 19 opportunities, right? Being able to hold the lead. You can see who's leading the category in that. So just a lot of great reports already created. Let's take a look at shortstops. We're going to look at fielding, and we're going to say we want at least one game at shortstop, right? So we can start taking a look at the percentage here. Um, we can look at who's had the most chances. And again, um, you can see Robin Younts leading the way there. Um, great plays. You can see who's leading the way on the great plays. Just really fun stuff. You can also, if you wanted to add other information, like if you wanted to see the... Uh, their position or their rating or whatever value next to it, you can choose to select that and show that with the name. So tons of stuff here. Up here at tools, right? You could export information on the players. Um, more stuff that you can do up here. Good stuff. Let me know in chat if there's some specific stuff that you wanted to see, because we're still under reports looking at players here, right? Um, Let's take a look at teams. We've done that, right? We've gone to the roster analysis. And uh, well, let's look at roster analysis. This is really useful um, to make sure that if you're doing a draft league or, or whatever, that you've got all of your positions covered. So if you take a look at the roster analysis, you can see every team here, we've got 40 players on the team, um, starting pitchers, um, and how many games, right? So you can see for Baltimore, there's nine starting pitchers, but they can cover 269 starts, right? So you can see these are pretty, because these are franchise files, you don't have to really worry, right? But if you're doing a draft league, this would be a good place to come to see, man, I don't have enough starts at third base, right? I better get a third baseman and things like that. You can look at the average age, the payroll, right? The average salary. And, and this is the numbers that are based on their DKS values versus actual contracts, things like that. But anyway, this is another great, um, report that's here. So let's look at league. Got to love this. League reports. So team versus team chart. Very nice. Let's see how you did against a certain team, right? So if we're looking at Atlanta across here. You see they're four and 10 against Cincinnati. The ones they really beat up on seem to be the Cubs and the, and the Padres, right? Which would make sense. So this is really good in a league to kind of see who, how you fared against other people in the league. This is a great view right here. Not much over here, just some of these windows. I wish you could expand all of these. Sometimes when you get a pop-up like this, you have the ability to expand it. Sometimes you don't. This one won't let me. Let's see what other we got under league. Standings by date. So let's go back to a date. Go back to June 7th. Oop, June 7th. Let me double click on it. So now if we go back and rewind it and say, hey, on June 7th, because we're on the 21st of July for this league, this is what the standings were. So that's kind of cool. You can go back to a specific point in time to see what the standings were. Very powerful. Um, team versus team chart. Home and road records by month. You can see how your team fared. Let's take a look at Detroit here. You can see really their best month was June, right? They outscored their opponents, how many home games they had, whether they won those, their opponents run. So this is just another view that's great to kind of see how the how your league broke down month by month 
more goodies here. Team salaries, we talked about that. Top player salaries, you can see. Um, I'll, let's take a look at this, injuries, current injuries. Because I have injuries turned on for this league. Here you go, injury report. Current injuries right now. Cool. Intestinal, poor Jeff Burroughs must have uh, ate at the wrong restaurant. Uh, crazy, right? What fun stuff, man. More reports for the league. Let's take a look at injuries history. So we can see all the people that have been injured, not just current ones. Oh my gosh, look at all the injuries we've had on. Temperate, we had, you can see game only injuries. This shows you all the injuries that um, have taken place so far throughout throughout the league. And yeah, I'm looking at your comment, Beatles. The league reports are just nuts. Uh, top performances. Let's do hitting streaks. Hitting streaks. Let's see what we got going on here. So Dave Rader, of all people, has a current one that he's riding. Longest so far for the year has been Jim Rice at 19. Very cool stuff. And here's what I wanted to show with the All-Star. Let's do manager first. Manager of the year so far. See who's in the voting. Yeah, we got... Uh, We've got uh, <laughs> Sparky, right, manager of the year. But look at this other one, exceeded expectations. For this, this isn't, I don't think I've ever noticed this popping up before, but it's talking about who exceeded expectations, right? Because the game's looking at what would have been expected at this point based on probably their Pythagorean uh, runs and all that good stuff. And Bobby Winkles for California is really out doing and, and even Sparky Anderson is doing a little bit better than they expected. This is cool. I haven't seen this report. I've seen manager there before. I have not seen this. This must be in, I don't know what recent edition that exceeded expectations. That's pretty cool when you're giving out league awards. Um, another thing with league, let's take a look at, I'm going to do this and show you. I'm going to hit create website. And I'm going to say no box scores, but we want to cover batting leaders, pitching leaders, team records, inj uh, inj and, and all-star voting, right? And let's do team pages. And I'm going to hit build website. I'm not going to include, I could include box scores if I wanted to. The last so many are all games, but I'm not. And I'm going to hit build website. And I'm going to show you where this goes. Because I think Beatles and I tried to mess with this one time. Building the webs. Oh, gosh. I've, I've just cr crashed something. May have to play with that more. I've never tried to. Um... The first time I think I've tried to create that. So maybe we'll come back to that one. So fire the game back up. Let's go into league. Uh, we'll mess with that. League news. Right? Here's the headlines. You can go day by day and take a look at some of the headlines as to what happened. You can see this was an all-star break coming up right here for these three days. Um, and the headlines, if they haven't played yet, will be um, scheduled games that are upcoming. But we can go back here on July 4th, what happened. Oh, we had some – shows you who got injured in the game. Another great report. And now I'm going to go focus on all-star games. All stars. So let's take a look at League One, which is the National League, I believe. And here is our All Star voting. Right now, halfway through at the All Star break, the, here's your Cy Young candidates in the lead, and, and George Foster is MVP. But it shows you how close some of the voting is. Um, you can see uh, first baseman Bob Watson and McCovey are pretty close and tied, right? Joe Morgan there. Right fielder. Yeah, you got Aaron, Willie Davis. So here's what you can do if you're replaying the season, and it's a blast. I've stopped at July 21st, so we're at the All-Star break. 
The other option you have is under league, when you go to all stars is, let's look at league two. Reggie Jackson and, and uh, Jim Hunter leading the way. We take a look at the voting right here. Fisk is leading the way for catcher. Eddie Murray. Wow, George Orta outpacing Rod Carew at second base. Wow. Hera, Mercer, Jim Rice, right? So here we are. Now, one of the cool things that you can do is, uh, now I've got to find it. Right here, organize, create all-star teams. So now I've got to the point for the all-star break. Why not go in, hit create all-star teams, right? And you'll notice it defaults to the file I'm using, which is the 70s misspelled file tests, 1231.22, right? And then what it did is it added all-star teams. So I'm going to say create. Now what it's done is created all-star teams. I think it's um, 30, I think of the size of the team. So now what it's done is I'm in the subfolder, and I have two teams right here, and I could schedule a game and play that game, which is always fun if you're doing a season replay. Figure out who's your vote getters for that thing. Let's have an all-star game and have some fun with it. So let's take a look at the all-star over here for the NL, right? Uh, Willie Davis, he's injured till 8-1, but he still got selected. So I guess we'll have to vote in a replacement. But this shows you uh, 28, it picks a 28-player um, roster. I don't know if that's historically what they took, but uh, there you go. There's your team. So we could come in here and say, you know what? Let's do a... We don't have any stars. We don't have any da daily lineups, right? So we could go in here and let's hit organize because we're in just the all-star file. Generate default team managers. Let's do their depth, player usage, and create some lineups. Let's hit them. Let's see what they got. So now this would be our NL all-stars. And let's take a look at load lineup one. So there'll be your starting lineup, right? So if you want to do an all-star game, there you go. Take a look at the AL all-star game. Load lineup, let's see, lineup for, versus a righty, right? Ah, George Orta getting the start. We got Rod Carew. He made the team, but he's uh, having to give way because George Orta is the starting uh, second baseman. What the heck's Orta got going on in this replay that's making him so good? Let's see. Oh, he's batting 302. You can see his fielding is horrible. So it's making me wonder. They're really uh, weighting his batting um, in this league. Oh, and he's outpacing his home run total already. So um, his OPS plus, um, still not that great. But anyway, I'm not sure I would have... Rod Carew sitting on the bench and George Orta starting, but hey, here we go. So now you can create all-star teams like that. And when you're ready, you play your all-star team, have fun in your league, and then you're ready to go back. You can just go hit on your recent file. And I can go right back here to, um, well, I can if I could find it. Right here. Why am I not seeing? I'm in that file. Hey, Ken Castro. Ken's missed. Ken's gonna have to go back and watch all this. He's missed all the good reporting. Um, So I need 70s file test, which is going to be – 
now I'm searching. I'm trying to figure out how to get back to the main. Hmm. Oh, I'm looking for it at the wrong place. It's 1970s file test. Right here. Bam. So you can see there's a couple of things that we've got here. I've got subfolders, right? I've got this one. I've got the all-star team I can click on, right? And I've got website. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to go look that up and see what's going on here. Love this digging around stuff. Back to the All Star game. Cool. So I think I got this now. So now we'll go here to 1970s file test. I click on that and I've got subfolders. So if I just click on that and hit save, it'll take me back to the main game. And here I am. And then I've got that subfolder for the All Star game. Good stuff. What other stuff we got in leagues here? Um, top performances player. Right. Plate appearances. You can see hits. Got some five hit games there. Walks may vary with four walks. De Jesus striking out five times in a game. That's a hell of a game, huh? Andre Dawson, three stolen bases in a game. It's just so deep. I mean, it's just, it goes on and on and on. So games. Now let's take a look at this. So under games, we can go look at game recaps box search under games this is really cool so we could say let's find a box because we want to find let's see what might be a cool one to look at um we want somebody that pitched at least uh nine innings and maximum of zero hits. It's searching, it's searching. I think I'm doing this right, right? At least nine innings pitched and zero hits. So I'm looking for a no hitter. It's look at it, searching all those box scores. Do, 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 do. No matches found. So let's say, how about nine innings pitched, one hit. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, we got a one hitter. Oh, we got two, three, four, five. So with this, you can select what criteria you're searching the box scores for. So here's what we did. We said, hey, we want at least nine innings pitched, no more than one hit. And so we got five uh, games here. Take a look at this one. And again, we can go in there and click on the box score and go back and take a look at it and figure out where did they give up that no hitter, right? Was it early? Was it late? So we don't have any no hitters yet. Um, do we have any? We don't care how many innings they pitch, but what about a minimum of 12 strikeouts? Let's search. Oh. We got several with 12 strikeouts. So this is another great uh, report finder in its own is when you get in here and start looking at the box score outcomes and searching. So we're finding here that we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games where there was at least 12 strikeouts.
So this is fun. I have not been in here in a long time searching for box scores, but this is um, another thing. You can start getting lost once you've replayed a season and look for it. Let's take a look at some of the batting stuff we've got. Um, outfield assists. Let's take a look at home runs in a game. Anybody with at least three home runs in a game. And we found one. And would you believe it's damn George Orta on, in April. What the heck did George do here? George Orta in the leadoff spot goes four for five with three home runs. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, I'm assuming... Um, He was the game MVP. Good to know. But anyway, th this is just another way you can go look at those box scores um, with the reports. The other thing is, again, while you're on this front screen, a lot of this that you can dig for in the box score, you can find right here, player highs. So if I click player high for both leagues, now it's showing me a lot of that, right? So I don't really have to go search for a lot of these. If I'm like, let's take a look at um, home runs. There's George Order, right? He would have shown on this report, and then I could have just clicked on him right here and gone and seen that box. So a lot of the cool features you might be using that search tool for for the box score, you can get to just easier, really, right here from this front screen with some of these options they have over on the display here. Good stuff. A snapshot is what I usually have it defaulted to. So you're seeing little bits of everything, right? You're seeing the team batting leaders, who's who's leading in all-star voting. That's kind of a glimpse of all across the categories. But, you know, you could come in here and have some fun. And and what we're doing, I know Ken came in a little late. We um, are looking at a uh, season I did up to the all-star break just so we could just kind of examine some of the um, – the information on it. The other thing we can do, if we've got a few minutes here, is I'll go into play. Let's go to schedule league game. We can see where we're at. And we're at July uh, 25th, the next schedule games. And um, when do we run out of games? Oh the 2nd of October. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play through October 2nd. And while we play, I'll see if there's any questions. Um, just take a few minutes for us to get through the season here. We can get um, any questions anybody has. While you're doing an autoplay like this, the cool thing is if you want to look at different screens, you come over here to the right and I can click on these. Like if I want to switch this to leaders, I click on leaders and I can start seeing Oh, here's my batting average leaders. I can come over here and hit highlights. And if I'm really quick, I can start seeing, they're, they're calling out some of the highlights for each of the games. Maybe I toggle it to batting, but you can keep down here a watch on the standings as each day, as, a, as the games are auto-played and generated, you can kind of sit here and track it. So a lot of times when I'm busy working on something, I'll just, I'll set one of my leagues while I'm testing it over here just to do an auto-play and run. Um, so I can examine the stats later and then come back and look at it, see if it's playing right. I catch a lot of errors sometimes on inputting data. Um, yeah, you can get doubles like lefties, crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you can just go nuts. And, and again, by all means, I'm not doing this video because I'm an expert on gaming. Um, hopefully, this will help some of the people that are newer to the game, but there's people out there that know how to go in much deeper and... Um, 
and even do combo reporting. Uh, I know Beatles, maybe before we go, we'll go in here and take a look at, you can, uh, we can go in here and show you how to create custom reports. If you want to just do your own custom report and pick the fields that you want on it, you can do that. Um, that's one thing I haven't done yet, but just kind of wanted to let this play, play through and see how the um, end of year stats look, right? Because we saw midway through the year. Um, but you can, you can, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, I'll put this and I'll have this, I'll take a several minutes for this to go through. But a lot of times um, when I'm testing some of the teams and files and that, I'll put it over here and let it go. And then I'll go back and look at some of the data to see if there's an anomaly or something, right? Like, wow, somebody's really off here. Oh, I've got them with only six strikeouts as a pitcher. And they should add, you know, 160 or something like that. So it's a good way to be able to go and verify if there's any errors on any of the files I create. But this 70s, uh, great baseball time for me. Followed it closely. Lived and died baseball in the 70s. Fun seeing some of these names up there. And it looks like we have any races here. We've got, uh, it looks like Baltimore's just really running away with the East over here. Oakland's got a nine and a half game lead in the West. Phillies and Pittsburgh. So maybe Beatles can cheer on that 70s Pittsburgh team. Maybe Will they catch Philadelphia? Um, they're two and a half back right now. Um, and again, I have a lot of variation because I have the rosters at 40 man. So I didn't limit them to 30 or 25. Um, I've got multi-game injuries on, which adds a whole nother level of excitement, right? So when I ran this league, I just, you can set all those rules up. So there's going to be a little variation. Again, you could always go back and um, choose the alternate reality, which is a great feature. Uh, and what that does is it takes a look at the player's card and it will secretly adjust it, either keep it the same, adjust it up a little or down a little. And you don't know that if you're managing the team. So it adds a, a little managerial excitement if you're doing a team because you've got to really look at how they're performing. You can't say, well, I know Carew's line is 300. He's going to bat or he's going to bat 350 for me. And I know he's only, you know, showing 270 now, but I know he's a 350 hitter. Um, if you run alternate reality, you don't know. Maybe the game adjusted him down to only be a 310 hitter that year, or maybe he got bumped up to a 360. That's some of the variation that gets thrown in with alternate reality. Random human wants to know if I'm going to post an update to the five-year files. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what video it is. I could look over here and see. I have a video that's up that's dedicated to projects. I forget what I labeled it, like projects I'm working on, or I could see it right here if I looked. Um, action PC baseball projects and new, you know, things, new old things that I'm working on. Under the description of that video, I have the links to all of these files. And I believe the most current, well, at least of two days ago, the most current files. If you scroll down in that description, you'll see I have my 60s file, 80s, 70s. I have a 70s photo pack, baseball card style for the 70s file. And then I put in my franchise NL and franchise AL files. There might only be one team that I've added since those were posted. I think that's the 16 or the 1918 to 22 Cubs. I'll probably get that file updated when I get finish with this 1916 to 20 Giants team. But so random human, they're probably 99.9% .9 the most updated files there. And look at Beatles. He's uh, doing the hard lifting for me here. And you can see it, it takes a, a little bit to sim the game, right? I mean, I've got a uh, uh, about a five-year-old decent gaming PC here. I got a 1070 card in here and a a 1070 Ti card and a an i7 like 9000 series chip, so you know it's not a complete dog of a system. But you can see the game uh, is compiling a lot of stuff, and it'll take several minutes to run through a full season replay. Uh, maybe 15 minutes to get through a full season. We're into August now, so we're making making progress through here. As we're watching these standings, I can see Pittsburgh's just lurking back. 
Baltimore's really want to run it away. They got a great pitching staff. It's funny, Reggie Jackson had 27 home runs, both iterations, um, for Oakland and for um, New York. But look, he's kind of slowed down a little. Kenny Singleton for those Mets. That's my photo. It's actually the Baltimore, but it's showing the photo for Kenny Singleton when he was with the Mets. Yeah, and the what if. Um, I, I'll pull what if too. So as soon as we get done with this replay here, Got 300 and some games to go. We'll go. We'll have all. We'll have final year stats to look, but we can go look for some of the uh, what if. And what it, what what if does is it says, okay, the matchup analysis screen does a lot of this too. But it says, what if I took you know this player from this year where they put up their numbers, and move them into onto another team in another park where they're going to get half of their you know at bats in that park. And it just it does all the behind the scenes adjusting for moving them from the era and park that they put the numbers up in into whatever place you want to put them to analyze them, right? So you could put them in a neutral park um, and remove their ballpark effects and keep them in the same year, or you can move them to a whole different park and a whole different year. And that's another what if you could get lost in. Really valuable for draft leagues. So for example, if, if we took, let's say you, you're doing a league and you're going to take 1970, and we're all going to draft a team from 70. We release all the players, and now all the players starting in 1970 are available to us, right? They're in the pool, but if we clicked on, let's say, I don't know, Frank Howard, it's going to know that he put those up in RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. And if you're looking at him and you're like, I want to draft him, but my team, since we're going to do in the replay, is oh yeah bucks are creeping back oh they're three and a half now um i'm gonna have my team in tiger stadium so if i'm the draft i'm the drafting co or manager right i'm like ooh, i want frank howard that what if is cool for me to scout to see hey if i if i draft frank howard will he perform just as good better or worse on my team because i'm gonna have him in tiger stadium in 1970 so to me like if you're in a draft league like that that's a really cool thing to see. Same thing with Ned McGreevy. I don't know how you all selected the parks you were in, but in Ned McGreevy League, you would have had the player. Well, I do know your players are coming from the historical collection, so you know they've already been neutralized uh, down to a um, neutralized era and um, park effect. But if, let's say, all those players came from you know, their parks, that's the way that you could Go in, analyze, and see if how they would perform in the year your park is. That makes sense. Hopefully, kind of beating around uh, a lot of ideas here, but hopefully that makes sense. We are now into the last month of the season. Yeah, the Bucks are um, four back. Look at L.A. creeping up on Cincinnati. Baltimore is just plowing away in the east. Is there hope? We've got a big stretch. Let's see. Maybe there's a big. Uh, see who's playing who right now. Philadelphia and St. Louis are playing. Pittsburgh is playing Cincinnati. Probably not the team you want to play when you're trying to catch up to the Phillies. Oh. But they grabbed a two to nothing win, I see up here. Really nice. Let's go back to our leaders. And. Ken Singleton leading the league in batting and Dave Rosema in ERA. Wow. Getting close. Got a couple weeks of the season left here. Let's see if anybody can catch anybody. Yeah, AL East is not even close. I mean, Baltimore, look at the pitching over here. I think uh, leaders 
if I click on leaders, see Baltimore's team ERA is under three. I mean, they're just, Oakland's is good too, but Baltimore is just dealing. But they, they were loaded. Getting close. And then we'll dig into some what ifs. Ken Castro. Thanks for everybody's patience bearing with me as we plug along through some of this. But this will give us some, some extra different info to look at after we've completed a whole replay. Oh, and we get oh Pittsburgh's within two. Let's see what can happen. They just lost to Houston. What? Start watching Pittsburgh up here. Oh, they now they pounded Houston eight to one right here. Nice, a night game. Their next game. Boom, against Houston again. Oh, they beat Houston again. Oh, we've, we're getting close, Beatles. It's kind of the, uh, we're pulling, I'm pulling for the Bucks here to see if we can get a little drama and have them overtake Philadelphia. Where are they at? Oh, now they're at home against Atlanta, and they win again. Uh-oh, Pittsburgh. Oh, they've got a, is it a day-night doubleheader? They win too. Oh my gosh. They've they've overtaken them. Unbelievable. Oh. We got a race there. I think we got just about four or five games left to go. This is kind of fun sometimes just sitting back and this is an entertaining view, right? Set up a league, let the Set up your managers, all that good stuff, let it autoplay, and just sit back and kind of watch the standings unfold here. You know, spend 15, probably take about 15 minutes or so to get through from beginning to end, April 1st to first week of October to get through this. Oh my gosh. We got four games left. They're on the road at Houston in the Astrodome. Come on, Pittsburgh. Oh, a four to two win for Pittsburgh. They're back on top. Look at this. Wow, looks like everybody else has theirs wrapped up. Uh oh, now they're on the road. They're going to close it out at San Francisco. How are they going to do on the road? Oh, they lost a heartbreaker there, huh? Well, 11 to 4 is not a heartbreaker, but they got to win on the road, Beatles. They get a win. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. They did it. They just came in, even even losing the last game. So let's take a look at all this goodness here. Now let's let the front page up, update. So now we've just run a whole season uh, with the 70s franchise file. And there's your, uh, there's your, they pulled it out, man. They pulled it out. So let's take a look at, let's go back to the team reports, right? Team compare. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. I want to look at the one, the team, team versus team. Uh, let's say Pittsburgh. Oh, you could do, you could just pick, must select two or more teams. Pittsburgh and Let's see how they did against San Francisco. Oh. And there you go. So now we can see I selected San Francisco and Pittsburgh, and now it's giving me all the games that they played, and it's showing me San Francisco won nine, Pittsburgh won nine of those. And then the road splits, how many hits and runs and how many errors. So you can, this is cool. I don't think I've ever messed with this team versus team. 
So it's, we can go back. And then if we wanted to look at these games, so where's the uh, last game we played here where they lost, right? We just click on that, and I can um, go look at each box score. So this is cool. So let's see how Pittsburgh uh, did against um, – Philadelphia, who they were chasing things down with. We can pick that up and you can see, ooh, they split with them. Six wins each. A couple of them went 10 innings, but it looks like they were pretty even in their uh, division. And how did they do against the other league leader, which is Cincinnati? And then there's all the games with Cincinnati. Fun, fun stuff. Um, league, team versus team chart, Ken Castro. Maybe you'd like this. So we can see it. You can look at your team. Where's, uh, we'll follow the bucks here. You can see they were 11 and 7 against uh, Atlanta. Who they have this? Who do they struggle with? Oh, they're only five and seven against Montreal of all people. So this is another fun view. Anyway, so let's take a look at leaders. We got all the leaders right here. Bobby Mercer edges out Ken Singleton. Reggie Jackson's hitting 46 home runs for the Yankees. RBI leader. Andy Messersmith with 23 wins. Mike Marshall with the save. So great stuff. Now, what do we want to look at? Where did we want to go? Because we want to look at custom reports. We can go to database. Let's go pull up the database. And let's say. We're going to pick all teams' batters, batting minimum. Now, let's say two and a half play appearances a game. And what do we want to look at? Expanded batting. So we have a lot of these reports that are already made. So I've, I've selected all teams, all the batters, no batting minimum. Let's look at... Uh, these are real stats. Now let's go to replay. So on the replay, this is the entire league file. Who had the most hits? We can toggle it. Yeah, Dave Cash. Games. Several players it played all 162. Most played appearances, Dave Cash. He also had the most at-bats, meaning he didn't get hurt, right? Highest average, again, you're going to see some of these people with very few at-bats. I could always go down here and change that batting minimum to at least two plate appearances per game, and then it gets rid of some of those trivial players, and then you start seeing who was really bad. I mean, heck, we got some people here with 500 at-bats. Uh, Wayne Garrett, 573 at-bats, and didn't even hit 200. Um, all the reports we can look at. So we've got basic batting, which are just these lines, right? We've got expanded battings we looked at. You can look at fielding, um, batting versus lefty, right? Best average versus lefty. Again, some of these we might have to screen out because only a few, but look, Manny Sanguian, he batted over 400 against lefties with 158 at-bats. So let's click on Manny Sanguian to get great information right on his card. Or I think I can. There he is. Yeah. So you can see over here real versus uh, versus um, lefties. He hit 361. In the replay, he hit 411. But look at how horrible he did against righties in the replay. In real uh, 288, he really dropped the ball against righties in the replay. So another cool angle. But let's say you don't like any of these. You go through here and you're like, okay, batting averages. 
Here's isolated power. Here's batting averages. We got all these cool pre-made reports, and you're like, eh. Hitting streaks. What's this? So you can see the hitting streak, 12, and the longest streak, right? Longest streak, Jim Rice for the League 19. Current hitting streak was sitting at 12 right now. Well, let's say you don't like this. So you can go over here to layout, hit layout, and you can go over here and take a look at all of the reports that are here, right? So you have all these. So let's go and make a new one. And let's go to report 47. It's called no name. I could give it a name. I don't know what we're going to call it. Call it new report. And we can just figure out what you want it to be. So what are the available columns? Well, we have all kinds of stuff here. We could, you know, all available stats. I mean, we can start creating what we'd want to see, right? So in one column right here, I would say, okay, the very first column I want in my report is I want games played, right? Okay, two, I click on two. After games played, I want it to be um, at bats. There's at bats. Okay. Number three, I want it to be um, what obscure thing could we find? Batting at home. Home runs at home. Boom. And then for number four, I click on four, and then I go, mm, let's do home runs. on the road. Okay. I hit okay. Now, when I go into here, you'll notice I have new report. It, you can add as many custom reports as you want. So now I have my new report. So when I go here, my new report will just show those fields I, I put on there. So it shows their games, at bats, home runs, in both categories. So this is fun stuff. And I could always go back to, you know, new report here and I could uh, delete everything, right? Make it go away. And then just figure out what, what I want to call the report, right? And, and I dig around and see all the stuff that this game tracks and figure out how I put it in there. Hello, Robbie. So yeah, you can go, not, not only has the game got every report you could think of, it even gives you the ability to put together reports in the format you want or anything that you'd want to specifically track. Um, the other thing I know we did a little bit earlier, but I know Ken's joined us here. Let's take a look at um, expanded batting. It's a good report to look at, right? So we're looking at this for the replay. But, you know, if you wanted to find a certain player and not scroll through it, you just go here and you say, you know, Smalley. I typed SML. Here's Roy Smalley. Then I can see his line, right, or pull up his card. So it's just the whole dat this database reporting feature, super powerful. Oh, I did double click on him, pull him up. There he is. So tons, uh, tons of good stuff in this game as far as uh, reports. Tools, while we're talking about some other things, some of the tools that are available up here. Now that I've run this league, if I wanted to reset it, I could come right over here and reset both of these. Okay. Um, I could... If, and under rules, I, I could generate, if I went into rules and changed rules to 30-man rosters, this would then show generate 30-man rosters. So if, so if whatever the rules are. So if I went into and said, you know, I want to change the rules of this league. And I want there to be 30-man right, rosters. Okay, I'm going to save that. Then when I go to tools, Let's see. I don't 
know when it'll change. It will change at some point, I think. Maybe it takes a while. Maybe I have to exit out and come back in. It would allow me to generate rosters that were just based on that um, selection. I can come in here and clear out all the stats and start over again if I want. Delete all the injuries. I can even give pitchers rest if I wanted to so many days. Um, or what other good stuff are here with the tools? Oh, what if? We're going to what if. Players, what if? Okay. So let's take a look at what if. This allow, this allows me to get it a little bit bigger here, but not too much, okay? So let's take a look at batting. This is going to look at the database. Here's all the real things. So you're going to say, here is Bill Freehand, for example. Minimum, say, 100 at-bats. So we've got Dave Cash. Let's take a look at, we've got Hank Aaron, right? So let's take a look at what if, let's just grab a team, all teams. Okay. So now we're seeing the what if, nothing's changed, right? So Carl Yastrzemski here. Go the high averages, right? Rod Carew, if you look over here, this is his current card, what he's where he comes from, and then this is where we're going to put him. We've done nothing yet, but let's watch these numbers on the right change. Watch Rod Carew's card change if we what if him. So now we're going to what if him to, so he played where? Metropolitan Stadium. Now we're going to put him in. Say I'm in a draft league and I have the Tigers. Oh, it's, I always hate forget that it's Briggs. So I'm going to go to Briggs Tiger Stadium. And if you notice up here, you'll see everything the same, just moving him that same year to Briggs. What did it do? It dropped his home runs by one, right? His average pretty much stayed the same. His doubles went up. Right. So very little variation. But now let's keep him in Tiger Stadium and let's put him in Tiger Stadium in. I don't know, 1966. American League, 1966 Tiger Stadium and hit this. Now, when I refresh that, now let's take a look at all these players. So now when I go up and look at Rod Carew, it made quite a big a difference, right? So now he's gone from a 12 home run, 11 um, triple player to doubles didn't change, but he's going to, he's going to hit more triples and more home runs. Okay. He's going to have little less of a batting average though, a little more of a slugging percentage by moving him from the year he's at with the twins in metropolitan and bringing him into 1966 American league. So to me, like if you're, if you're doing a draft league, um, this would be great to see. It would be awesome to be able to, um, to figure out the what if like, I'm at, what's this guy going to look like when he's, when he's on my team, let's go take a look at a specific, pull up a real year. So let's go and let me see 19, Let's go take a look at 1971. So I'm going to pull up the 71 season. Uh, this is how they finished in real life. No games have been played. I'm going to go to player reports, see what ifs. Let's say I was going to do a draft league. We're going to start with the 71 season. I want to just... Keep batters with at least 200 at bats here. Okay, so here's our what if box. Hopefully, this is big enough for everybody to see. 
go back 1971. So we got Joe Torrey batting 363, right? Now, if we move him to a neutral park and take him out of uh, Bush Stadium, look over here to the right. You, it's already changing him from a line of 34, 8, and 24 to 34, 6, and 26, right? His average is going to drop 352, which means that Bush Stadium helped him in some categories and hurt him in others, right? Hurt him a little on home runs. So let's say I'm going to do a 1971. Now let's use 1971 and move him around that year. So if we go to 1971 National, and then we go to Bush. Hit refresh. Okay. You'll notice that it's identical. Why? It should be. Because that's where he came from, 71 Bush, and that's what we're telling him we're going to move him into. But now let's start changing one thing. 1971 National League, but let's move him to um, Riverfront Stadium. Hit refresh. And now you can see, ooh, I move him into Riverfront. He's going to have a little bit more uh, home runs, right? But his average is going to drop. 22 points his average is going to drop. Oh, 1930. Let's do it. Okay, let's go to, we'll put him in a neutral park, so we won't even declare the park, and we're going to go to 1930 National League, and then we're going to refresh for everybody, and then let's scroll, and he will hit 424. How about that? Home runs go up a little, right? He gets a few more triples if you think about the era. But now let's put him in a park. So give me a 1930s park. Oh, my gosh. What, what about um, Scheib? Let's go to 1930 Scheib Park. Okay. Yeah, let's go to Scheib. And then we'll decrease. Hit refresh. Let's go back and look at him. And now, again, in Scheib Park, 1930, very similar, right? 424. He's getting a bump in, quite a bit of a bump in doubles and triples, extra base hits, right? Home runs, not too much. But now let's take him to 1968. And what do you have? So we go down to 1968, and you can see Joe Torre. Then he's going to we're playing in 68 National League. He's going to have less. He's going to have diminished numbers, right? Because it's looking at that 68 era. And that's a neutral park. Now we, if we put him back into Bush, see if Bush has any effect up or down. You can start seeing Bush's effect that year. Be Bush Warren. Refresh it again. Let's go up and take a look at him. Yeah. So now you put him in Bush, and it's going to be better. So showing that Bush was a better hitter's park in 68. Weaker on the home runs, though. So moving him around. So this is, yeah, when you start talking about fantasy draft leagues, you real this what if is just really really important um, for the context because they're not you have to know the context. Not everybody is coming from the same place. You got to know where did they put their numbers up, what were those circumstances, and then what circumstances are you bringing them into, right? Um, and the one thing that you could always do is you know you could set up a league and choose to hey we're not gonna we're just gonna let the year they're playing impact them. We'll just remove this. So we're just going to, we could set all of the ballparks to just neutral, right? And then you're just, then all your, the only factor you're seeing here is what does it look like when I move Joe Torrey from 1971 Bush to 
1968, right? Or let's go back here to 71, put him right back in the same year he came from. Now, all you're looking at is the era adjustment going from 71 to, to um, uh, I'm sorry, you're just removing the ballpark out of this. You're saying, hey, I'm going to take Joe Torrey in 71, keep him in 71, but just put him into an average park instead of into Bush, and you'll start seeing what the average park does to him right here. Yeah, and big deal with the, with the McGreevy League, too. I know Beatles is saying on, on how that can impact what you're looking at. But, um, yeah, so the history collection. Let me. I had a test file. Let me see if I can pull up that test file. I think I did an FYF test. Let me see this. Uh, I've got to find the right one. I can't remember what I call it. Test. Here's a problem when you got so many, and I know um, Beatles has to have the same thing. I've got so many darn things I've got in here where I'm testing leagues. Um, uh, what test league do I got? I think it's this one. Blank test league. So you guys remember I did a, oh, this isn't it. It's killing me. Somebody watches this later, they can fast forward. Blank league test. Yeah. Crazy. Well, here's one I did where I did the alternate reality 2014 test. I just grabbed a bunch of different teams and brought them in there. But anyway, you can see the what if. Keep at bats to a decent amount. All right, you can see some of these players, high average on this file coming in. Here's Paul Wayner in Pittsburgh, right? And here I've got him just taking him out of his park that he's assigned to, right? His average drops a little, but let's move him to 1930, uh, National League. And Paul Wayner actually comes down because I think his stats are based on the 20s, which even had higher. So anyway, fun stuff. I'll just get lost in here doing that. What do you guys want to see? Anything, uh, anything else? Think what other files I might have in here to um, got some of the Negro League files here that I've got. I haven't done anything with those yet. So we'll pull up, let's take a look at 1935 Negro League here. We want to see everything. So this will be just Steve is randomly just going to dig through crap in action. And whoever wants to tune in, feel free to. But this is a 1935 file. Take a look at some of these teams here. We got cool Papa Bell, a 10 in center field. Sam Bankhead. There's that Pittsburgh Crawfords with Josh Gibson. 
Oscar Charleston. This would be a fun team. Just figuring out how to get their stats to line up like in an all-time player league. That's on my many to-do list here. But uh, you can see uh, there's Josh Gibson. Um, I'm looking at this, and I also believe in these files that um, Action has. Um, there's a schedule as well, which there is. So he has schedules built into these. So that'll be fun. I haven't done anything with the Negro Leagues yet, yet, but ah, Pop Lloyd, yeah. And as I dig through my seasons, I'm let me pull up over here on the screen where I can see it a little bit better. Got another screen over here where I can look at my um, seasons. Trying to think what other ones I've got here. Um, some of them that might be interesting. Let me pull up my uh, KOD. This one here was a beginning of the century. Oh, it's still grinding here. I sent it into a uh, vicious cycle because I, I clicked on three things over here on my other screen, and it probably just locked it up. Cool thing is, you can always close it and open it back up. Let me pull up let me pull up something here. I'm going to bring over in my folder. And we were looking at the test that we just did, right? So we were playing. 1970s file. And if I go into my seasons folder here and look for that 1970s file, this test file right here, you'll notice that it saved uh, that website option, Beatles. And we we're looking at how do we do stuff with websites? When I open this up, right, it saved a bunch of stuff here. And if I go to click on like records, I don't think I gave it enough time. Look what it look what it pulls up. It pulls up an actual website for me. So if you use this website option, let me see if I can pull this back up again. Where was it? Was it reports? league create website i'm going to want team comparison charts batting and pitching leaders okay and i'm going to hit build and i'm not going to touch it let's let's let it do its thing and i get a runtime error i don't know why i'm getting a runtime error on that but if I go click under here, here's what it's pulling up. It's basically, it's not doing, I might have to dig into this a little bit, but ideally it would create these web pages for you if you had a website. So it looks like um, 
it happens every time you try it too. Yeah, it's, maybe there's a bug in there. I'll have to let Action know about that. I've never really messed with this before, but it looks like this is what, whatever you'd want it to do, it's going to create like an HTML document so that you can, you can drop it right there. So look at this, and then you can, and then it'll have uh, all the links for you or whatever already set up. So hey, that's something else to dig into. So more stuff coming on that. It'll be another episode. How about, is any, anybody's got some time hanging out? I don't even know who's left here. Oh my gosh, we've got eight people here. What the heck's going on? This is huge for me. Um, what about encyclopedias? So. I haven't been in the encyclopedia forever. So how do I even get into it? Utilities. Oh. How about the big word that says encyclopedia? Let's click on encyclopedia. And here we go. Oh boy. And it, so you can create different encyclopedia names, player names, abbreviations, so you can track stuff. Um, seasons in encyclopedia. Interesting. Looks like I had saved some stuff from Encyclopedia 2, Encyclopedia 1, because I use I don't do anything in encyclopedias, but we could save. Interesting. my first time in here and I've never used the encyclopedia. I have to figure this out. Seasons all one. Okay, we just got one. I don't think we've saved anything yet. I know this file that we have up, the 70s file. Tools, right? You can set the all-time records, but I believe under rules, I could have set this up for the encyclopedia to capture this season. So let's go under rules. Oh, apply league records to all time book. And I think that uh, means that that will save them there. And Beatles says, I do not understand it at all. Either do I. Now, now this would be my next thing. I think I'm, I might have to come back and do one just on the encyclopedia and see if I can actually figure out what. Um, what everything is involved with that, because um, I have to get in the manual and dig that out because I have never done anything with encyclopedias. But I do know, I take that back early on. I do know that like you could, like if you're going to replay 19, start in 1970 or do the history of baseball at 1900 or whatever, when you replay the seasons, you can have all of that season replay go into the encyclopedia. And then when you run 1901, the same thing, 1902, then you could go back and analyze your replay encyclopedia and compare it to real. So. Oh, smelly wrestling geek. I know this is a baseball broadcast, but um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar. I do have the hockey game, and um, I'm not as knowledgeable about hockey as the other sports. And the, my five-year file, I do have a hockey version that's very just started where I take players' best two years on the best – five for that franchise right so you can see here i got montreal 74 to 78 and i've got these teams put together but i don't have any knowledge on setting these lines up so if i ever get back to this project and start adding teams to it love to have people like yourself take a peek at it to provide some input on a project like this but i just got these five franchises done so i do have the other action games Well, I think that's about it. Let me know if you got any questions. We'll dig some other stuff, but that's going to be my next one. Dig into the encyclopedia. 
figure out what's going on with that. And I still have yet to figure out there's a thread on the forum on um, what we have going on with the mod tools. I mean, how people are starting to use these mod tools to bring in and move zip files around, bring image files in, save them for different periods of time for, for the team. So that's something I'm looking forward to digging in more. And uh, let me just share a little something with you here. Under game preferences, there's a whole thread at the action forums because under video and sound, you know, we have the narrator option. But for me to get more than just Zira and David, oh my gosh, it was driving me nuts. So now I have Mark. So if we fire up a game, uh, let me set up an exhibition game here. I'll show you what I'm working on now. Uh, you know what? Let me change the file. It's something that where I've got all my stuff set up just right. Oh, got to go through all this good stuff. Get all set up to play ball. Play ball. Pitching for Pittsburgh, number 22, Bird, 11. So you can listen to that voice. Los Angeles, second baseman, number 15, David Lopez. I hate that voice. So we go to video and sound. I now have these um, other options here. Now I'm trying to figure out why am I not getting, oh. Welcome to Three Rivers Stadium. For today's game between Los Angeles and Pittsburgh, Andy Messersmith takes the mound for Los Angeles. He's made 36 starts on the year and is 23 and six with an earned run average of 265. His fifth start against Pittsburgh. He's four and zero with a 212 earned run average against Pittsburgh. A post by Bert 11 for Pittsburgh. He's made 34 starts on the year and is 17 and 12 with an earned run average of 351. All right. His Hurry up. start against Los Angeles. He's 1 and 3 with a 540 earned run average against Los Angeles. It's 69 degrees. Now batting, number 15. David Lopez. 1 2 from 11. Lopez hits a fly ball towards right. Parker is under it. Hang on, Robbie. For the out. Center fielder, number three, Willie Davis. One of the things I wanted to highlight in here, I'll talk a little bit about the narrator because I've been digging into this. You heard it, he, this Bly Levin. If you're in the game plan, you go up here under options and hit edit narrator, narrator translations. And just type in Bly Levin. 11. B11, he says. Then you can come down here. I'll say. B11. Bly Levin. That sounds better, right? So we can go with. B11. Or. Bly Levin. Bly Levin. I'm going to save it. Boom. So that's how you edit the translator. So you can edit in the game. Um, and now we don't know that. Frank Tavares, same thing. Be interesting to see how uh, the uh, translator chooses his name, right? It's not case sensitive either, but we can say uh, Tavares. Tavares, right? Tavares. Tavares. Boom. So that's one way that you can go in, and if you want it to sound great, you can edit it, right? But let's take a look at the options I've got here under sound. It's not giving me in the middle of the game. To choose that so I'm gonna exit out I'm gonna change my season over and I'm gonna show you what I've done some of the um, fi I've been trying I want it to be better right I want it to be better so bad so when I go into game preferences here Video and sound, right? Why am I not seeing? Let me back out here. 
thanks for everybody's patience while I get through here. I'm trying to um, you see it loads up a random picture of a ball field every time you load it up, which is kind of cool. So let's go to game preferences, video and sound. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to pick uh, Microsoft David. Now that's the ugly one, right? I want Mark. I'm going to do Mark. Okay. So Mark's my guy. And let's set up our exhibition. And we got the old Cubs in Brooklyn here. Let's just set up something. I don't have any pictures set up for these teams. Pitching for Chi 1906 to 10, Jack Beister. Leading off for BRKLY in 1916 to 20, center fielder, hi, Myers. So they're basically reading off the screen. So one of the things we've noticed, and I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, I'm playing on full screen here, right? And it doesn't show like all of the play-by-play. -play. So if I change my preferences and go over to three-quarter screen, okay? And one of the things you can do under preferences as well is play-by-play. -play. So let's look at the play-by-play. -play. Where do you want it to be? So do you want, you can select short. I don't like short play-by-play. -play. I like all of it. You can select, you want there to be bias with the home team, right? Um, hey, MV. Um, play by play, speed, whatever, right? You can, you've got some options here, right? So you want to hear base runner situations. I want the most sound that we can have, okay? So let's hear how this, now if I want to go in and tweak this guy, let's go back to that. My video and sound, I've got him, maybe I'll slow him down a little bit, but this is a different voice. I've been playing around. I, I was able to get two more voices in here to play with. Welcome to West Side Grounds. For today's game between BRKLYN 1916 to 20 and Chi 1906 to 10. Jeff Pfeffer takes the mound for BRKLYN 1916 to 20. Making his first start of the year. A post by Jack Beister for Chi 1906 to 10. Also making his first start. It's 52 degrees. Wind speed 9 miles per hour and we have a 55% chance of rain. Myers faces Beister. Beister with the first pitch. Deep fly to left. It could go. Shekard chasing back. On the track. He jumps. And makes the catch. Okay, Beatles. Stick with me if anybody wants to. I'm going to show you a couple cool things First that basement. aren't here yet, but could no be mention. coming. Yeah, it it's a little bit. He sounds a little bit better, right? And then you can play a little bit with him. But on, I've got another computer downstairs in my um, golf sim that has Windows 11, and I went and upgraded and got on the trial for the beta for like the most updated Windows 11 version because they had these neural voices through Microsoft Azure, where you can have their realistic sounding voices, then you can have them sound cheerful, excited, and do things. So I'm going to show you guys something that I'm hoping coming soon that if I could get my hands on and get it as a narrator in the game would bring much more enjoyment. It's not Ernie Harwell, right? But it's better than these robotic sounding voices. So let's listen to a little bit more of... Konechi now in the batter's box. Biester toes the rubber. 2-2 two -two count. Konechi hits a grounder between first and second. Evers goes to his left. Fields it. Throws to first and Konechi is retired. Now here's one thing. Fielder, Zach, we. Here's the one thing for those of you watching that I love is you notice how the video kind of pauses and tries to stay connected with the play-by-play. -play. That's That's been new in some of the releases. 2-1 count. Wheat lines a base hit to center. Hoffman retrieves it and tosses it back in. Designated hitter, Ernie, Kruger. Kruger to face, Beister. 
Killed up is on deck if he reaches base. Runner on first. The one two pitch. Kruger cuts. It's popped up. Straight back. Into the stands. So, just a little demo. Um, having the little bit, this announcer sounds better than that robotic one, right? Um, but I'm going to pull up a site here and, and share um, with everybody. We'll let another uh... runner on first. Jack stares in. One, two count. Strike Kruger three. ribs and misses. Punch out. No runs, one hit, no errors. After one half inning. BRKLYN 1916-20, to G1906-10 coming to bat. Pitching for BRKLYN 1916-20, to Jeff, Pepper. Leading off for G1906-10, first baseman, Frank, Chance. Let me do a couple more at-bats here while I look up for... Um us and I can show you what the future could sound like, which could get us really close to a better broadcaster. Chance will lead off the inning. Pepper takes the sign from Miller. Two balls, one strike. Chance hits a fly ball down the right field line. Slicing. Pittman giving chase. Foul. Oh. Okay. 2-2 two, two count. Chance grounds a base hit through the right side. Pittman tosses it back in. Second baseman, Johnny, Evers. The second baseman, Evers steps in. Runner on first. Pepper with the first pitch. Pitch out. Nothing going. Runner on first. Pepper looks at the runner on first. Pepper with the 1 0. Evers swings. He hits a line drive down the right field line. Pittman dives. And I, what do you think, Beatles? Robbie, what do you guys think on, on this? Th this is a. For extra bases. Here's what I love. All the way to the wall. Oh, he's still. He's scores. Play still going. Evers rounds second. He'll try for a triple. Pittman fires to Kilda. The throw from Kilda. Evers slides. Save. Triple. Center fielder, Solly Hoffman. Yeah, I, I agree this is a lot better. I like the voice better. Here's what I'm really happy with. The game's doing a great job of timing the play-by-play -play, uh, narration and the video. And... Um, I know that had been a complaint in the past with some people that being off. This this looks really good to me. I mean, tell me what you guys think. It looks like it's really sync. So now my thing is, it seems like the video chalkboard and all that sync. Now my next thing is, how do I get the narrator voice better? Um, and here's where the personality. So now I'm going to drag this over. And uh, through Azure, there's these neural voices that Microsoft's coming up with, right? So this is what I was playing with, and this is so cool. So I'm thinking, what would a play-by-play? -play? So let's say, um, um, how about one of these, right? I'm going to type in a mock play-by-play, -play and we're going to listen to what some of these natural voices sound like, right? Let's, let's do a little something right here. Give me some ideas for play-by-play -play here, Beatles, right? I'm trying to think. I'm going to throw a little uh, description in here, and then we can see how this, this one will sound, right? You're the play-by-play -play guy, Beatles, right?
Okay, just an example, right? So let's look at how some of these voices. So here's one that has speaking style. So let's let's play it. May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Winds up and delivers the pitch. Mays takes a big swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. He leaps and makes the catch. Right, so we can play around with the speed, you know. Mays steps to the plate. A little bit, right? The pitch, you can lower him a little. Mays steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Um, but here's what's really cool. So we picked this newer voice. How about speaking style? So we could say cheerful. May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Winds up and delivers the pitch. Mays takes a big swing and connects. Let's get this pitch right. Huh? May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Winds up and delivers the pitch. Mays takes a big swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. He leaps and makes the catch. Okay. Excited. Steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Winds up and delivers the pitch. Mays takes a big swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. He leaps and makes the catch. So you can see that you can come up with these different styles. Here's a, how about this one, whispering. May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. <laughs> Winds up and delivers the pitch. We need Robbie. Yeah, yeah we need Chris Slovic. swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. He leaps and makes... Angry. What do we got? Angry. May steps to the plate. Gibson to So I think if you just do general, right? If it's the general, and you know you've got a couple exclamation points, stuff like that. Um, May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Winds up and delivers the pitch. <laughs> Mays takes a big swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. He leaps and makes the catch. So I'm I'm on a quest to get a better narrator. So I get sidetracked on so much stuff. But I think these neural voices, um, which I have on my other PC. So I'm going to get the game loaded on that later this week and maybe and kind of test that out. But there's so many different voices here. Um, who we got? Tony. May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber, winds up and delivers the pitch. Mace takes a big swing and connects. Hard hit ball to right field. Williams is backing up to the warning track. I like it. Beetle says that sounds sleazy. What do we got here? Mace steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. So a lot of these don't have them, but some of them have these speaking styles where they're getting different, you know. I wonder what shouting would be. May steps to the plate. Gibson toes the rubber. Yeah, it's obnoxious. Anyway, you guys get where I'm going with this, but I'm hoping that Microsoft will allow some of these more neural voices that are a little natural and w and are going to be better because they're basically just using that to read the play-by-play. -play. In the third spot, it's Hoffman. Runner on third. 2-1 count. Hoffman goes after it. That's what I was saying, Robbie, like with an exclamation point. It seemed like... Placed up the middle. That's a base hit. Evers scores. Myers tosses it back in. Catcher, Johnny, Kling. Now let me see. I couldn't change it before, but let's see. I could change it to Richard. It's another one I got that's Canadian English. Batting four. It's Kling. Runner on first. Beffer gets the sign. The 2 1 pitch. Kling hits a rope to right center. Myers hustling over. He takes it on one hop. Hoffman goes to third. Kling rounds first. 
Kling is making a dash for second. Here comes the throw from Myers. Kling with a head first slide. Save. Double. Left fielder, Jimmy Shackard. Yeah, and it's, you know, another thing that's interesting, um, Beatles, is I was looking at some of these third party voices they have. It'd be fun. They've got people with like a southern accent and different things. I mean, so now my brain's spinning on, gosh, how can we get something that, you know, emulates, even if it's not a known like Ernie Harwell or something, but somebody that sounds, you know, more like a broadcaster or whatever, or with a unique voice. So that's going to be on my many, uh, my long list of to do. But I do agree this, I think this sounds a little bit better. These other two options with Mark and, um, Richard that I have in here. And then I think you can slow down. You can't, you can mess with the pitch within the window settings, but I think within the game, you can pretty much do, do their voice speed. Sheckard now batting. Steinfeld is on deck. Runners on second and third. First pitch from Pepper. Curve. Sheckard hits it on the ground to the mound. Pepper gloves it. To first for out number one. Now, if we look at how... Harry Steinfeld. So if we're playing in three-quarter, right, we get the full play-by-play -play box here, right? Now, if I switch this over and I go back to full screen, the third baseman, Steinfeld, steps in. Runners on second and third. 0 2 count. Steinfeld hits a blooper. Towards the mound. Right to Pepper. And he makes the catch. Right fielder, Frank Schultz. It doesn't seem steps that. In against Pepper. Runners on second and third. The 0 2 pitch. Schultz swings. Hard on the ground to Johnston at third. Off his glove. Schultz is safe. Johnston will be charged with an error. Short stop, Joe Tinker. Yeah, I'm sitting here. If I do broadcast like Beatles is telling me, I can let this guy do the play-by-play, -play, and then I can add my color. It's like having the robot announcer work with me as a team. So maybe I'll start doing that. Um, but it seems to it just seemed to me that um, it was more verbose um, when it was um, not this short box, right? And maybe I, maybe it's just me, right? But I like that longer box. Um, trying to think what other things I stumbled across here. Um, just forgot what it was here on. Do a couple the more of stop. these. Tinker steps in. Archer is on deck if he gets on. Runners at the corners. Pepper keeps the runners close. 0 2 from Jeff Pepper. Fastball. Tinker swings. It's a deep fly ball towards right center. Hickman drifting back. He's under it. And he puts it away for out number three. Three runs, four hits, one error. After one. G1906-103, BRKLYN1916-20. Second baseman, Peep, killed up. Yeah, what's interesting here is... It's, of course, it's, it's trying to name my abbreviations that I've got here. The other thing is, what if we go from at-bat mode down here and click it to pitch mode? Kilduff will bat first this inning. Jack has the sign. First offering from Theister. Kilduff swings. Slapped on the ground through the middle. Diving stabbed by Tinker. Throws to first. Out. Third baseman, Jimmy Johnston. So let's do this. I 
I'm in pitch mode. The third baseman, Johnston steps in. Let's see if it sounds any different. Fiesta with the first pitch. Johnston swings and misses. Strike one. O oh, one count. The pitch from Fiesta. Johnston rips. He hits it on the ground between third and short. Steinfeld to his left. Fields it. To chance at first. I'm really happy. Yeah, I, I wish Short Beatles. Stop. We got to figure I out how to get guess. Ernie's voice in here, but I'm I'm just so happy with the pausing and the timing. Olson to the plate. Olson to bunt. It's bunted in front of the plate. Kling bare hands it. He throws to Evers covering. Out. No runs, no hits, no errors. After one and a half. G1906 to 10-3, BRKLYN1916 to 20-0. Designated hitter, Jimmy Archer. Um, I think so. I go back to pitch mode. Just do it for a batter Archer at a time. Off the inning. Pepper with the first pitch. Almost in the dirt. Ball one. Pepper is ready. 1 0 count. The pitch from Pepper. Ball away. Archer checks his swing. Ump says he held up. Ball two. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with um, some of the play by plays that's here. If I could just get the narrator sounding better, so. Who knows? I'll be digging around more around this, and this will be my brain will be consumed with this along with all the other baseball stuff I'm doing. But um, let's zip through this and uh, see who wins this game. I'm getting a little impatient here. We got the 16 to 20 Brooklyn uh, Robins going up against those notorious Cubs with that great pitching, and uh, ooh, looks like the Cubs. Uh, won that game so some good dead ball baseball right there can't beat some dead ball baseball Jack Feaster with the MVP yeah so much more yeah this I like this Beatles we start off with one thing and then we digress into all these other different areas but yeah I, I appreciate everybody letting you know staying with me here and while we rambled through a bunch of stuff and hopefully the reports are helpful to you. Um, the compare box, let's click on compare again, right? Um, all teams batting replay. Let's go real. So if you look at the NL file, this is a good way to look at it too, right? You can see all the batting and you can say, what? A lot of teams on here what's the team what's the big batting teams and wow look at that you got that Houston 97 to 2001 team with that OPS how about uh stolen base percentage um yeah we've got some uh teams back in here they've got the early numbers where we don't have caught stealings on them in fact I need to look and see how the game's handling that that's one thing I've got on my list to look into um Home runs. Since, look at that. The big clue uh, on that 54 to 58 Cincy team. Look at that. 300 and home run, 301 home runs on that roster for that team. Wow. Let's take a look at real pitching. Oh, yeah. Look at this. You wonder why that team's so good? Look at the team ERA 1.75 for those Cubs. Wow. No wonder they're so good, right? Um, worst ERA. How about the, the Prince Fielder Milwaukee uh, Brewers? Wow. Complete games. About 196 complete games for those uh, Pirate Shouts. This is a cool way to look at the league, too. I don't think we looked at this earlier on the team compare. 
um, at the bottom. You notice down here you can have the league totals at the bottom, or you can just do average per team. Changes this bottom line here. Um, batting plus is a new report. This is not what's only going to let me do real stats. Yeah, because betting plus it's only replay only. I can go down here and select just div certain divisions that I've got set up. more stuff to uh, play around with. Let's see, we got, even if, uh, yeah, Ken is going to make me do a whole broadcast just doing stats early, yeah, no doubt. Um, even if it was where Ernie would Dave use as another choice broadcaster like Bob Uecker, yeah. Uh, Steve, you're on, like, click in the classroom. Thanks, Arnold. Um, a lot of cool stuff here. Um, Let's look at ballparks data. Give me a little ballpark data. Click on Angel Stadium in Anaheim. Um, year by year, I don't know if I've covered it on another video with the seam heads and stuff. I'm looking at figuring out, gosh, how could you have the three-year rolling averages? Gosh, look how many, look how many parks there are in different years of use, right? You know, there's the Astrodome. Uh, to go in there and have a file where I did a complete copy of this, but three year and then saved it with another name so that you could go back and forth. It's a whole nother project I've, I've got on my mind. Um, eras. Cool thing about eras is if we go into organize eras, historical era data, you'll notice that I've been compiling a lot of different things. You'll notice I've created one down here called Five Year that I'm going to um, do myself, right? And I'll have a five year for each year. And what I'm going to, when I'm coming up with three year, roll, I'm, I'm taking the, the year before it, after it, and the current year and doing like they do with the three year ballparks. And I'm coming up with the data to have rolling era averages. And that way, um, I could match him up. I could also come down here and I'm going to have like the 1970s era and different things like that. So don't know why, just so I can fine tune things. It's going to take me a lot of time to do that because um, it's just what I'm doing. But you'll notice like if you go in here and look at night in the 30s, you're going to see we've got Negro League data for any seasons that they're tracking that. You'd want to look at it because it's going to be different, right? So if we go to 1938, you, this is per 1,000, right? So you can see the average hits. How many doubles in the thousand at bats? Then we go to the national. You see that now, if you were going to play a Negro League season in '38, since we have files now, you can see that it has its own specific um, per um, a thousand at bats. I think it is. Yeah. And the Negro Leagues, I think, will stop right here. They have data for them throughout. All these eras, if you look here, all the way up to 49, 50, and then they'll stop in 51. And I think we go back. Yeah, we even have them. So you'll notice it's different than we have them all the way through the era of the Negro League. So that's going to be, that's cool that that's built in here. So I've been looking at a lot of the eras and different things like that to adjust. Um, Um, yeah, it's the most comprehensive. I don't know how cards and dice could be this comprehensive because how do you report on cards and dice? It's it's you, right? It's it's you compiling them. Um, but yeah, it's it. You know, the game's so good, and now I want it to be better. I'm like, ooh, how could the graphics get any better? Ooh, how could uh, the narrator be better? So um, I try to balance that with all the other projects I'm working on. So hey, it's quite a hobby. <laughs>
Hey, while we're here, though, I mean, you reminded me about the what if. Anybody want to see anything else or have any questions while I've got a few more minutes I can kill here? And my wife's being very patient with me today. I don't have any other chores to do, so. Um, oh, yeah, that, be, yeah, yeah. Y you select your pitch or whatever, and then all of a sudden it cuts to like MLB the show style graphics to see the outcome of your play. And that, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That would be, that would be great. Um, I was trying to think here. The game manual, definitely recommend it for anybody that's you know not familiar with the game or even if you are going in here and clicking on the manual and uh it's pretty extensive it doesn't cover i mean everything as in depth as you might want but it does touch on what all the utilities are for and how you do things and some of the player ratings and um uh, what they mean in the game and so on so that's available right there Internet game. Uh, Beatles and I played a game yesterday using this, which I highly recommend because if you if you go to the Action Form Internet Play Tips, they're trying to show you how to get around all your routers and firewalls uh, without using a, a virtual network. But I think you just go to this free log me in Amachi Networks, and it takes you right to takes you right to this this page, and you download Hamachi, set up an account with them. It's free. And then this is the one that works right here. You just join this network lobby. And now anybody that's in there has got a tunnel and they can see the IP addresses for each other in there. And it's very easy to connect and host and join games. And we tested it out yesterday and played a game head to head. And that was a blast. So I'm just trying to think some of the other features while I'm here. Again, you could go in here and do your edit narr narrator translations. You know, um, let's see how it. Let's pick a name. Gwyn. Okay, it's got Tony Gwyn. That's a tough name. Oh. Yes, Tramski. Look at this. It's. Yes, Tramski. Yes, Tramski. Yeah, I, I had to do some, I had to get it to save this. This is one that I was trying to get, but you can go in here and you can do that here or you can do it while you're in the game and you, you hear him announce something, you could go in there and change it. Um, trying to think what else we have here. Play by play. Pick the situation and you can get in here and edit this as much as you want. You can even save a different file and bring it into the game if you wanted a more robust one. I was looking at some of these. Okay, let's say so-and-so's on deck, right? So 31% of the time it's going to use on deck. These are 13% usages, right? Um, and then you've got 1%, which would be really, I mean, how much variation do you have that announcing that somebody's on deck, right? Um. He's under it. He camps under it, waiting for it. He's waiting. He's under it now. So, I mean, you could get in and go through all of these different lines and then figure out how you wanted to spice it up, right? And if you wanted it to be really different, 31% of the time it's going to use this basic one, I, I believe, right here. Um, and, and it doesn't seem like we can change this one, but you can add the other... Um, I guess what, 69% of the time, you could really tweak it. Leaps. It's over his head. He dives. He lays out. He gets dirty. Goes horizontal. He lunges. I mean, again, this is another rabbit hole. If you really, some of these folks that love the play by play, you can go in here and just try to edit this as much as you want. And you have all these different scenarios. Infield fly rule in effect. Not much to say with that. Not much variation, right? It's a roller. It's a dribbler. Um, walked him on four pitches. Walked him on four straight balls. So some of these, right, it's hard to maybe come up with variations, but 
again, you could get lost in here. Of all these different situations, broken bat, cracked the bat, shattered the bat. So again, the, another reason why I love this game is very tweakable. You're like, man, I, I want, I've never heard this phrase on a um, uh, a ball up the middle, right? Well, put the phrase in there and then figure out if you want to see it 13% of the time or more, right? Like if you fill these up, you know, this one's coming up 26% of the time, this 26, you could get your phrase in there. So that's play by play. Um, setting up custom sounds. This is where we could use Beatles and his synthesizer and his skills. Um, baseball sounds here we have, right? Just the normal. Uh, strike three. Strike three. Strike three. Strike three. Strike three. You're out. These <laughs> are pretty good, huh? Time. Ball four. Take your base. So you can play around with these, right? Oh, that's cool. Extrapolate and add. You can get all that good stuff, right? Then the other thing is on the player. Some people may not know this too. Let's go to Del Ennis. Let's pull up his player card. We have, uh, right? Here's Del Ennis, right? We can go to Del Ennis and we look at this. It says you can go, you can click this link if you want to look for photos of him, right? Plate music. So you could have under your sounds folder, you could create a folder for the Phillies, a folder for a certain player, and you could have um, walk up music. You could even select it. I like this. If we want, like if he, I guess there's certain players, right? I know Javi Baez for the Tigers. When he goes back to Chicago, he gets booed a lot, right? So um, boo on the road, right? Um, or we could assign something in here. But so you could have a sounds folder and then create a subfolder and just have walk-up music. I've never even messed with this. Never even messed with this. But I mean, somebody with Beatles background and his knowledge of, you know, getting clips and all that, that could be really, that could be cool. I wouldn't want to do it for an entire league. Right. But to think about how you could personalize your team in a draft league, right. You in the Ned McGreevy league, you get a personal attachment to these players that you've drafted. You could really tweak up a draft league and get your own little clips, save them. And then when, you know, somebody, when Howie Shanks is walking up, you could, you know, be playing some old 20s music or something like that. Who knows what walk-up music they would have had back then. But anyway, more stuff that you can put into the game that I've never even messed with. And you can do it right here. Um, I think under roster tools. I don't think they have any. I think, yeah, the walk-up music, you'd have to just assign it to, uh, this is just pretty much for the photos and that. You just assign it to... Um, at the player level for the specific walk-up music. Another Shanks reference. Yeah, I got Howie Shanks in there. And you know what's funny? Do I have him? Was he AL or NL? You can always go to Organize Player Search. This is awesome. On your file. And let's look at him. No Shanks there. Let's go F Y F A L. Go to the A L file. He's got to be on one of those Senators teams, I think, Shanks. There he is. Howie Shanks. For the Senators. I think he played. Yeah, look. <laughs> hey, 
He can play any position but catcher. Look at that. So he's on the 1912 to 16 Senator team. How does this always uh, evolve into a Howie Shanks issue? Um, and here's what I'm doing on my file. And I haven't done it with these. I'm going into modifying all the teams. And I'm trying to get, um, so like on this, I'm trying to put, so that, so that it calls out the year a lot better. So now when I go um, and look through, it, it should stand out, right? It defaults to the year their parks assigned. So they're assigned to that middle year. But let's take a look at Howie Shanks. What's he doing? There he is. Yeah, think about when you guys set up the championship, you could really tweak it. You could also move it over to 2023. Um, Beatles, and you could really... Uh, you know, logo it up, plate music, all the good stuff there for sure. But yeah, I'm going about, you can see on some of the the file I had here, like New York Yankees 60, 60 to 61. To me, when you look at it, I think if you've got the 19 or up here in some of these years, like with Tampa Bay, um, it can get a little confusing, right? I don't have the year. So I'm trying to go to a format like here with Chicago. And I just haven't done the A. I'll go through all of them, right? And just get that. But I'm stuck with the characters because that's that's the most I can do. So I'm having to change the abbreviate more of the name just to give myself room to have the years clearly called out. But to me, um, you can kind of see here, it can be a little confusing to figure out what years they are. Just my opinion. And then if I go over to the NL file, which I've already done. You'll see that I've pretty much done them. I had to edit one team, though. I think it was the Reds right here. So I'll edit that team, and I'll just tell it Cincy, uh, we'll go 1902. And now I think I've got all these teams done. So now when you look at it, you're seeing the actual year with the, whether it's 2000 or 19. I've had to abbreviate, you know, some of the teams down, like Pittsburgh. I had to take an R out or whatever. I could, I could just go with P-I-T-T. -T. I think everybody can tell who it is, but. Anyway, um, yeah, there is enough room in the banner, but for some reason, you've only got so much when you go on that team name. You've only got so many characters to work with. So, but I, it has a little bit nicer look um, for here. Um, trying to think, I think MV was asking about um, new teams that I and I I think the new file that I put up. Yesterday or the day before has this. This is the newest team I put in. This 1918 to 22 Cubs team, and um, they went to the World Series in 1918. Didn't have too many good years outside of that, but they needed to be represented. Um, batting, you can tell batting, not great batters back then. A lot of it, Max Flack. There's a name you don't hear a lot of, right? Who plays a pretty good right field and Ray Grimes. At first base, a guy that only played, I think, about five or six years in the majors and had two or three really good ones. Look at that, 337 average leading the team in home runs. Uh, but here's what makes that this team really good. These two pitchers, look at that. We look at our game started here. You got Hippo Vaughn and Pete Alexander. That's a heck of a one-two punch in a starting row rotation. So nice. I'm just killing time, man. Ah, he still wants to create the New York Knights for the natural. Yeah. We get some uh make believe teams in here, some fictional teams for sure. But the amount of teams is getting up there. I'm trying to think. Um I had two teams over here that uh, I'm working on. The 16 to 20 Giants will be coming soon. I'm going to look at my project list over here. And I think there's a red team. Oh, then I'll be doing a Cubs team that picks up from the 06 to 10 and doing a 1910 to 14 Cubs team 
and then I'll be doing a Reds team. Let me go click on my deal here. I will be doing a, oh, where is it? 1923 to 27 Reds team that was 83 and 70. So those are probably the next three teams I'll be coming out will be NL teams. Nice. Hey, we're up to seven people. I can't believe I haven't driven people away. I'm just sitting here rambling. I'm like, who the hell wants to listen to this stuff? But uh, but I, I do when, when I'm tuning into others cha other channels, you know. I enjoy it. But, um, yeah, no real plan here. We've covered a lot of reports. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can cover. Again, it, the game's just great with uh, a lot of cool stuff. And the other thing is if everybody owns the game, right, and, and you're doing a league where you're playing head-to-head -head or you're doing um, where you, you download like a manager file, you know, you set your lineups and everything. And if you went in here and set your lineups, you can go in here and, and export and import your games that have been played into a master league file um, and everything. Good. We, we, I'm sure other people will be glad you're showering finally, Beatles. Um, glad to hear that. It's got a big night out. But uh, yeah, I'm going to call it a wrap on this. And it's been great spending some time and going through all this stuff. And uh, how would you rate a fictional player? You know how you'd rate them any damn way you want. Oh, you know what? Hey, let's. Oh my gosh, let's. Um, it's a cool thing. Well, you can do that in the game. So let's, let me pick a season. Just pick some season to mess with here. Before I go, MV, this is a good one, right? Let's, pay, let's take the 1915 Federal League. Okay. Then if you ever want to play with a league, you just go to Utilities and hit Backup. And sometimes you can. it'll name it the Backup, or I'll, I can just go... I'll just uh, call it something else like, uh, what are we going to test here? We're going to test, we're going to test fictional, right? Or no ratings. Copy the database. It shows me I'm in it, but I never trust it. I'll, I'll always go back to some other one. Then I'll go find my, I don't know why I do it. I'm just a little uh, crazy that way. Then I'll go here. I'll go into my test fictional league. So now I don't care if I screw this league up, right? So let's go on a roster. Let's pick this roster and let's create a player from scratch. I want to add a player, right? And we could do this with a completely blank team. Let's call this, let's give them a name. I'm going to call it, um, let's just pick a name. We're going to go with Ned McGreevy, right? That's the pit player I'm going to have on my uh, team. And uh, keep it with McGreevy, right? No, nickname is uh, Old Bones, whatever I want to put in here, right? It's going to bat right. You can pick the type. You want to pick the type of battery he is, or you could let the uh, computer do that for you, right? If he's new, say he's neutral, spray, pull, dead pull, right? How old is he? He's 22. What year? Yeah, he'll be 19, uh, say 1916 or 1915 right here, federally. You want to put a human uniform, all this good stuff, right? Now you could sit here and um, select all this stuff if you knew it, right? What's his range and all that kind of good stuff. So let's say we don't have any of that. So now we've got a brand new player on here called Ned McGreevy. So if I right click on him and hit modify, it says modify real stats over here. Let's go modify his real stats. This Let's say I don't have batting stats for him, right? The game needs batting stats. If I don't have any of this, let me create them. So let's say, how many games did he play? Well, let's say he played 123. Was he a starter? Yeah, he started about 60% of the time. What kind of average did he have? Uh, I'm going to say he's probably a 270 average. Is How's his power? Oh, he's a little bit better than average power. 
walks, um, he's a little below average. Strikeouts, he's a really above average, right? And then I can just hit create, boom. And it's going to give me stats now, and I've built him in the game, right? And it's it's given him a run rating and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so anyway, it's it, just a cool way. I could I could come over here and create fielding stats too. I could say, well, you know what? Second base with his first position. I think he's about a seven range. Um, he's uh, he can play some shortstop. We'll make him keep him in a five range, and that's about it. And then hit create fielding stats, and there you go. So now it's showing that he's about um, a 60% starter, right? And it's going to give me some starts at um, different bases right here for him. Same thing you could do with pitchers. So this is kind of a cool thing. Um, yeah, and here's the other thing you could do, again, and if you ever want to get into creating custom leagues, what you could do is we could go in here and um, – since we're in this federal league that I made a copy of just to butcher and play around with, you could also go into your era. And you could come down here. So you have all these errors. Let's say you wanted to create your tooth. I don't know what year you graduated, Ken. I'll go to my year here. 1984, right? And I could create a new league and call it, uh, you know, you could call it Michigan High School, okay? And then you could come in here and put all the data. So if you had all the dats for all the teams in that league or whatever, right? Um, you could come in there and set up your era because you'd, you'd, you'd want it now, right? Let's do it. 1975. 1975, we're going to have a... Call it the Ken Castro League, right? And... Um, And here we go. And then I can, you know, if we look at the American, that league, national, right, ever. Then if we go to whatever we want to name Ken Castro, then you can customize if you had that league's data. So this is how people go in and recreate PCL seasons, right? So if you created PCL or other minor league seasons, you could come into the game and put in the era data so that it knows where it's going, you know, how many games they played, college seasons, things like that. So people that recreate those, they definitely come here and, and get that era data so that it, it knows. Um, all the circumstances the player was put in. So, yeah, always good, fun stuff. So we go back to, uh, there's Ned McGreevy. So we've got McGreevy. He's not a pitcher. You can always uh, modify him and display him. with. He's just a batter. So we could right-click on him and just show him with batters, not pitchers here. And now we're over here looking for a shortstop, and we've got um, there he is, Ned McGreevy. Oh, maybe I didn't save him when I made it, but anyway. That's how you create players and you can get in there. So if you had some fictional ones, I don't, there's no thing, nothing I know about where you just hit a button and it just creates names for you, like some games might do, but you could definitely, if you had the information or wanted to just get creative, sit down and just create players out of your head. So fun stuff, a lot of stuff you can do with this league. And I'm wondering if I have, I'll take a peek over here. I may have some, uh, Crazy leagues. Take a look at my season folder. I don't think I have any. Nope. I don't have any of the ones like this where it was like a high school league or whatever. I know in basketball we did some like a uh, women's college league one time playing around. But anyway, always a bunch of fun stuff you can do. 
Cool. Well, uh, I'm going to call it a day. It's been fun. I think next time I may dig into the encyclopedia and run some season replays and just let the encyclopedia um, track those and kind of explore that and find out what all the things you can do to track. It'd be great if you're running a league, right? You could drop that league's year into it and then you go into the next year and then you could drop that in your encyclopedia and then you can go back and look at your league encyclopedias and history and all that good stuff. So. Um, definitely a valuable tool, just something I've never messed with. So you guys have a great uh, last day of the year. Have a happy new year. And uh, I'll be back next week, no doubt, with some other topic. And if you haven't um, already, subscribe. That's appreciated. And then uh, look for uh, my uh, stream I did on the uh, projects. And look at the description. It's pretty lengthy. If you drop down, it has all the links to the files that I've created uh, that I've made available. So feel free to download all those and enjoy them. And with that, we'll see you all next year.